Hey, and I, I want to make mention, Tony, that we are pretty much about a year from when we first started having a conversation about, uh, at that time, we were calling it the Wuhan uh, uh, virus, coronavirus. Now we've, we've uh, graduated to COVID-19. Um, a year, what a difference a year makes because we are, we are at the worst uh, case scenario in terms of numbers right now in Ontario. Uh, Tony, recently you had made some comments uh, through your social media about how you perceive that this um, might be dealt with. Uh, being a former health minister of the province, you do have some insight in this matter. And uh, of course, you dealt with the SARS epidemic. Uh, tell me a bit, Tony, about your thoughts on this and, and how you feel the province should be moving forward right now. Well, uh, thanks for the opportunity. My, my thoughts were based, uh, obviously, th through the prism of my experience handling SARS, uh, the SARS outbreak in 2003, but also as a private citizen in Ontario and going through this uh, up and down and starting and stopping and red zone and green zone kind of whack-a-mole that's been going on to, to deal with the outbreak. And my point that I expressed was, look, it's very clear that Doug Ford has... Uh, he has pre-sold the idea that something new has to be done, uh, that uh, the numbers are, the case numbers are going up, uh, and uh, he expressed concern about the uh, capacity of our hospitals, our ICU units, to deal with uh, hospitalized cases in the future if, if that trend were to continue. So my thought is very simple. Look, if you're going to do something, if, if you've already made up your mind you're going to do something more than the lockdown that we have, Make it a real lockdown. You know, go big or go home is what I said. And my thought there was, if you really want to try to break the back of this, then we're going to have to reduce our manufacturing, reduce construction, uh, you know, do these things that are not being done right now for a time limited period, two weeks, three weeks max. And hopefully that will give our hospitals capacity again. Tony, um, you know, we are hearing today um, that curfew, the curfew idea may not be on the table for this upcoming um, advanced lockdown. I'm not sure what we're calling it yet, but whatever the new terms of lockdown is uh, coming up from the province, uh, Quebec has obviously moved into a lockdown or a curfew scenario. Um, what are your thoughts on, on curfews? Um, you know, it, it, there seems to not be a real science there in terms of how it could be beneficial in, in a lockdown scenario. I'm not a big fan of the curfew. Uh, I saw the UK implement a curfew a few months ago, and all it did, uh, all it meant was people were congregating earlier, uh, whether to shop or to go to a pub or whatever they were doing. And you'd have these masses of people outside, congregating outside after the curfew of the pubs, let's say. So, uh, you know, and even if you have a firm curfew where no street activity is allowed, what it means is all of the people who are used to shopping at eight o'clock or nine o'clock in, you know, in a, in a large grocery store are going to shop at six o'clock or seven o'clock. And you're going to have a lot more people congregating than than should be wise. So uh, not a big fan of the curfew. I do see the need to curtail, unfortunately, other businesses uh, and uh, also curtail travel uh, for the short term. If, if, if Doug Ford does that, I, I'd be all in favor of that as long as there is an end goal. This can't go on forever. It's not sustainable economically or for mental health or, uh, you know, all the other things that happen when you when you curtail these things, drug addiction, spousal abuse, you do it for a short period of time, break the back of it and hopefully get your act together when it comes to vaccine distribution. It's interesting, that too, going back, you mentioned manufacturing because not on an official capacity, but uh, the idea of closing down manufacturing has been sort of making its way through the, through the, um, the rumor mill right now. Um, what would be the benefit, I guess, of shutting down manufacturing plants in Ontario? Well, I, I think there's enough evidence uh, that part of the problem has been uh, being at close quarters in a manufacturing facility uh, for eight hours a day doing your shift uh, speeds the transmission. And if we have this new variant that has been identified in the UK, it would, which is 60, 60 to 70 percent more transmissible, then again, you're going to have a problem in these workplaces where physical distancing is, is tougher to do. So I think that's the reasoning there. Tony, you know, having uh, you on as a resource for this type of thing, being the provincial uh, experience, you know, 
where, how do you rate what Doug Ford has been doing lately? Because, you know, last week he said, he made the comment, you know, if you saw these numbers, you'd fall off your chair. Andrea Horvath, Horvath's response to that was, I don't want to wait till Tuesday to fall off my chair. Why, why, you know, why would Doug Ford be holding onto this information and how do you perceive that as, as a tactic right now? Well, I thought that was very bad communications by, by the premier. And uh, usually he's been very good as a communicator. That was not his shining moment because what you're doing is you're, you're, you're forcing people to worry over the weekend. We don't have the data. We don't know what he's got planned. So you're kind of laying this egg. I got something planned. Uh, you, you, would, you wouldn't believe the data I've seen. Well, I don't know. I've not, I've not seen your data. Tell me what your data is. So Horvath was was on the money with that. It was not a good communication strategy. Clearly, they hadn't made a decision yet. I, I understand cabinet is meeting today, Monday, and, and making a bunch of decisions. But uh, why they wouldn't wait until they were making decisions, uh, I found that a real head scratcher. So from your perspective, where do you think this could be going? I mean, you know, if, if you were in these conversations right now, where, where would it be going for you? The, 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 the only thing I'd be caring, well, I care about it all, but the thing that I'd really care about is hospital capacity. We got to have enough ICU beds available for people who are, have heart attacks or, or, or uh, obviously COVID, uh, whatever the trauma is, we've got to have those beds available. So that I'd be uh, finding ways to increase that and also finding ways to decrease the number of people being admitted, i.e. lowering our, our numbers. That's what I would care about. The, the, well, at least we're not in this position, which was fanciful of April, May. Oh, we're going to flatten the curve. We're going to beat this. We're not going to beat it. It's a virus. It's here. It's, it's part, of, uh, part of humanity now, unfortunately. And the only, only way out uh, of getting killed by it is the vaccine. You're still going to get it, but you're not going to get, you're not going to die from it. That's, that's the, uh, the faint hope at the end of this year. But uh, uh, very frustrated with the vaccine rollout and would like to see much bigger effort from Mr. Trudeau and, and then there, thereby the premiers to, uh, to, to find other sources of the vaccine and get, and get it into our, into our arms. Tony, just to round this out and going back to our original conversation, um, how much longer can we be doing this? Uh, you know, when, when do we hit an end point of, all right, we're not, no more lockdowns, no more red green zones. We're going to move back to business as usual and, and kind of hope for the best at this point. Well, I think that uh, I'm really hoping that over the summer we'll get our numbers down and uh, also over the summer the amount of uh, vaccinations that will have been completed will be much larger. Uh, so I, I think we've got some heavy lifting over the next four or five months, but hopefully there's some light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I get people are frustrated. I talk to small business people all the time. I'm a small business person myself. Everybody's worried about the future and frustrated, and everybody's frustrated with this whack-a-mole, as I call it, lockdown, out of lockdown. Um, uh, it's, it's where we are, and, and uh, I, I think the government has burned through a lot of every government, Every single government. I'm not. I'm not just picking on Ford or picking on Trudeau. Every government has burned through a lot of uh, its own transparency and a lot of it, its own credibility. Uh, and so, if Trudeau were to say tomorrow we're all in this together, there's going to be 30, 40 percent of the population that, that's going to say, "No, we're not." Uh, and you know, Rod Phillips didn't help that situation either. So, so I, I think that we've got to get uh, quite apart from the rhetoric. We have to focus on vaccine rollout and protecting our ICU capacity. Tony Clement, really appreciate it. You know, there's so much I could be talking to you about with this, but we only have a limited amount of time. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll be able to chat with you again as we move through whatever is going to be happening in the next uh, week or so. But um, until then, I appreciate you taking the time. I wish you the best, and uh, thank you so much. Well, we're we're living in Muskoka, so things could be worse, right? <laughs> That's true.